Good afternoon, welcome to UK Column News. It is the 7th of January 2015 and it's just gone one o'clock. Myself, Louise Collins, Ryan Kerrish and Nick are here in Plymouth on a very windy and wet day. Uh, happy Par New Year. Yes, Happy New Year and all of that. We'll say thank you very much to all the people who've given us such brilliant support over 2014. We think 2015 is going to be a, a critical year uh, for Britain. UK Column is predicting we're going to see all three parties, the Lib Lab Con, effectively working together to collapse democracy in this country. So UK Column is going to be particularly outspoken in 2015. We're going to be analysing what's going on in the uh, political world. And we're going to start today being particularly gritty on your subject of the weather. Um, well, of course, the weather's a bit gloomy. It's cold. Uh, we've got a lot of forecasts for ultra cold weather over weeks. We'll see whether that's true or not. But we just like to remind people, of course, that according to the Daily Telegraph in 2014, uh, the weather could be blamed on global warming, which had been caused by beavers and squirrels in the uh, Siberian That's wastelands. Right, yeah. uh, so our solution for this was to put Britain's royal family into Siberia, where they could hunt and shoot the beavers and squirrels to their entire satisfaction thereby solving global warming, bad weather, and of course, ridding uh, Britain of a troublesome royal family. So on a little bit of a cynical start, 2015, uh, we're going to announce some changes to UK Column News. And the first thing is that we will be doing a rebroadcast of the daily news at 2100 daily, Monday to Friday. Uh, this is to give a set start time 2100, 9 p.m., that okay. is in the evening. And um, it means anybody, of course, who can't see us during the day knows that uh, they can sit down at a set time in the evenings to see UK Column News. So please don't waste your time anymore with the BBC. We hope that you'll come to us and be encouraging friends and others uh, to see UK Column live. And subscribe to ukcolumn.org. Indeed. And we'll also give a reminder, we've got a very, very important British Constitution Group conference coming up in Telford. That's uh, the weekend of the 28th of February, 1st of March. Uh, we know that uh, there is going to be a major attempt by David Cameron's government to collapse what remains of the British Constitution and indeed the protections of common law. And uh, the conference is going to specifically be talking about these issues um, with a very firm drive on what we can do uh, to counter it. So um, what do we regard ourselves? We are, of course, activists. Uh, David Cameron has labelled people like UK Column who believe uh, uh, that uh, violence is not the way forward. Uh, so Cameron regards us as non violent activists, um, very dangerous terrorists. people. Yes, well, close to domestic yeah. terrorists. But of course, we know that the real domestic terrorists in Britain reside in Westminster. So we're going to kick off with just a reminder of the dangers of uh, David, our King Cameron. We make no apologies for bringing this forward once again, because this is the quality of uh, person that's now running Britain. And of course, as we're seeing from mainstream news today, um, he's having to admit that uh, he has to do what the European Union tell him. He can't change immigration. He can't deal with the budget. He can't deal with this because David Cameron is not in control. The bankers are. So we were asking, is this the most dangerous man in uh, British political history? Uh, of course, he's deflecting all attention from the collapse of uh, UK society and constitutions and economy um, uh, on the subject of terrorism. Um, we've seen headline after headline uh, talking about this Britain facing the greatest terrorist threat in history. We see no evidence for this. Um, we've got new laws to confiscate passports in the last couple of days. It was reported that if people had not paid their TV license, for example, they could be stopped at airports no. in trying to travel overseas. And of course, very, very dangerous British politician, uh, Theresa May. Uh, she can't deal with uh, child abuse um, in the country. 
uh, but she's hot on the heels of solving the world's terrorist problem. Can I just ask, yeah, um, well, I've just made me ask, we what should actually be... can she solve? What has she actually come out and triumphed over? What nothing. job has she, there's absolutely nothing, is there? No. I can't think of, H, revenue and customs, joke. Well, customs coming into the country, joke. Child abuse, joke. Um, well, she has achieved a particularly fine score on her dress code. Remember that she's, she's famed cute, for yeah. the quality of her shoes, her leopard skin jacket. But this is the type of people now governing Britain. We're not making it up. All of this has been reported in the mainstream press. So what sort of thing can these people do? Well, let's come into um, Ixaro, a very interesting um, news organisation, which we're going to be looking into in some detail. Uh, but what has Ixaro been reporting? Well, we happen to agree with them on this. Uh, they are saying this is about kids being raped by those in power and that include politicians of all sorts. And that's a quote from an ex-metropolitan police officer of 30 years service. Of course, all of this coming out on the background of uh, prolific uh, British paedophile Jimmy Savile, who had free access to the royal family, free access to uh, the government. The Israeli uh, government. The Israeli government, mental hospitals, um, children's um, homes, uh, he had a free hand in order to carry out his sordid business. Uh, but we are to, be, are to believe that, of course, the establishment did not know what he was doing. Well, on the other hand, uh, we've got William Hague and others working desperately to dismantle Britain's uh, constitution. Uh, so William Hague has uh, now switched from a disastrous foreign uh, policy uh, role to having a look at how our constitution and common law can be broken down. UK um, column front page inserted there said treason softly spoken, and that is indeed the theme. Meanwhile, um, of course, um, Cameron is looking to uh, boost his own image by criticising uh, Putin. Uh, Putin is the man causing all of the problems in the world at the moment. And according to uh, Cameron, uh, don't worry what's happening at home in the UK, just focus on, uh, on uh, Putin. Uh, well, we are very interested to uh, hear consistently, I think, that people think Putin is, is a better premier than Cameron. Perhaps we'll debate that uh, further. But we're going to say until Britain cleans up the filth that inhabits the establishment uh, and Westminster, and indeed the senior echelons of the police, there can be no fairness no. or justice. I know you're reaching to come in, Louise. Right, Let me on. just roll through this because we said we were going to get off to a crunchy start in 2015. So here we are with the independent headline, Detention, the black hole at the heart of British justice. And they're getting very excited because suspected terrorists can only be held uh, sorry, sorry, uh, suspected terrorists can only be held for 14 days without charge, yet asylum seekers and migrants can be held indefinitely. Well, of course, holding people is one thing, but of course the other headline has been mm. we are torturing them. The British government has been involved in the torture of people uh, in detention. They have concealed the torture of people. So not only are we holding people who are innocent of crime, uh, holding them indefinitely, uh, the British government involved in torture. And of course, we should look at this in the context of uh, uh, child abuse campaigners like Robert Green, who's been in prison twice in order to stop him trying to protect <coughs> children. And of course, he's still currently held under what is effectively house arrest um, at the whim of the Scottish state. So the mainstream press simply don't want to get to grips with the real issue they're uh, pussyfooting around the what edges dates, on this. What date is court for, for Robert? Robert is going to be back in court in Aberdeen on the 13th of um, this month. Uh, anybody who's north of the border and would like, <coughs> to, would like to go, I know that Rob, Robert would appreciate their support, um, but it is possible that the court hearing could be very short, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and therefore the feeling is that... Um, it would be um, not be cost effective for people to travel huge distances no. in order to support him. But if you're north of the border or you've got the available time to spend a few minutes in court with Robert, 
We'd very much uh, like people to be there on the 13th in Aberdeen, and we'll give you more details on that. So um, the state of the country is we can't protect our children. And a reminder here, of course, that uh, the Met police have been calling for child abuse victims to come forward. Uh, but of course, we know in Ben Fellow's case, yeah. the moment he came forward, uh, he was uh, threatened, victimised, <coughs> and indeed uh, had family members terrified of the actions of uh, Britain's police forces. So um, double speak at yeah. best, or there's a very dark agenda going on by the Met Police. Uh, but here they are with a tweet saying, well, if you've been subjected to abuse, come forward. We want to hear from you. Well, it isn't only the police that wants to hear from people because Exaro News, which is a very interesting mix of ex-policemen journalists, seems to have a unique um, private pipeline into government in order to always lead on what's happening with child abuse. And I know, Louise, you've been having a little look at the background to Exaro, and uh, we're going to uh, produce some more material on that. But this is the good news. Ben Fellows yeah. released on bail. Yeah, he went, he was, it was originally the 29th of December, he was due in court. Uh, that was then delayed and went on to the second. We didn't attend because apparently Ben mustn't speak to us, even on a friend basis, but we didn't attend. But the, a lot of people did go and support Ben. He was released on bail. And uh, we, I haven't got the exact date in front of me. I will have it tomorrow um, you know, for when his trial will be. But he is mm. with friends and family. He's doing very well, apparently. And um, I will inform you some more tomorrow with dates of his trial, which I think, again, will be at Southwark Crown Court, that photo there. And this, taken this at is Southwark. for um, perverting the, the course, course of, of justice. justice. Exactly. So Ben has spoken out about child abuse um, but that has resulted in a charge of perverting the course of justice. And we'll just hop back to Ixaro here because we've been fascinated that Ixaro news team, who were boasting um, a little over a year ago that they helped prove that uh, Ben Fellows wasn't telling the truth, has uniquely um, been tweeting out that people should not be talking about Ben Fellows. So we've got a very strange mix of journalists and ex-policemen who seem to have a route direct to Theresa May, yep. uh, who are now telling the public what they should and should not be doing with respect to somebody who has spoken out on the subject of child abuse. So many questions to be asked about exactly who Xaro News is, uh, who funds them, who runs them, what their real agenda is, and we'll be digging into that deeper in due course. But let's remind ourselves, um, security of uh, families, individuals, children in Britain relies, of course, on the police. And um, here is ACPO, the private company, uh, which we can rely on to protect us, apparently, um, talking about failings in Rotherham and that ACPO and the police are going to make major changes uh, to um, improve their uh, record on um, child abuse and the little bit underlined here is it says that if victims will come forward we will listen to them we will take their allegations seriously we will treat them sensitively and then of course if you're Robert Green or Ben Fellows we're going to bang you up in prison. Mm. Amazing, uh, isn't it? We don't have to make it up and let's of course look at the people behind this sort of policy well here she is Sarah Thornton Chief Constable of Thames Valley Police Vice President of ACPO, and we're going to be coming straight back into the subject of child abuse at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College uh, because it ties in with some of the things you're going to cover. Mm. Uh, but the police, uh, it doesn't matter where we go, the police at the moment do not want to do their job on child abuse. So we've got Chris Eyre, uh, who there's a little video clip on YouTube now showing him uh, effectively refusing to speak to uh, Mickey Summers on child abuse. We've got uh, Melanie Shaw, very vulnerable child abuse victim, uh, was imprisoned, hounded by the police. And, um, you know, we're just going to say, so ACPO victims are reporting to the police. We will take their allegations seriously. We will treat them sensitively okay. by putting them in prison. Prove it, that's what we say. 
if you're yeah. going to take them seriously, look after them. Well, I, I think we can say we know some of the policemen and women um, are very distressed at what's happening in yeah. the police force at the moment. The corruption seems to be at the higher levels and uh, it's becoming very interesting how much information is being released. So what does David our King Cameron have to say? Well, basically, as we mentioned last year, he says, I think we should move on from allegations of uh, sexual abuse involving political figures. Nothing to see. Ah. We should move on. And in set top right, of course, we've got a picture of David Cameron centre with uh, convicted and sentenced uh, paedophile and sexual deviant Matthew Byrne who was, of course, a common purpose uh, future leader. Uh, Michael Heseltine is the other man in that photo. And we're captioning it, David Cameron's flawed judgment. No child abuse, nothing to see. So that brings us nicely to a subject I know you're very keen to cover, Louise, which is um, this man. Yeah. And uh, Prince Indeed. Andrew here also saying um, he's going to move on after the allegations. Nothing to see. I've done nothing wrong. I'm going to move on and do my job. And of course, he's he's getting support by this. Um, he is. Boris gentleman. Johnson yesterday used his LBC radio show to come out in support of Prince Andrew. Um, he said he told listeners, Prince Andrew, let's be very clear, is a guy that does a huge amount of unsung, unheralded work for this country. People go on about his air miles and so on. But actually, I have seen that guy get out there and sell this country to help British firms to get business. So you're if you're asking me if I have sympathy for him, of course I do. So that's very nice well, of you, Boris. I'm sure they will be uh, well, very pleased for your support. Um, Boris declaring the sort of man he is, because, of course, this is the um, meat of the, uh, of the whole affair, which is uh, Mr Epstein, if we can just... Yep, thank you, Nick. Um, so we, we've got a picture here of um, the prince with convicted paedophile. This is not a halfway measure. This is the two men together. And of course, Prince Andrew supported his friend, Mr Epstein. But we're very interested in what the BBC has been up to because we're saying that the BBC is already showing its attempt to use professionals to manage public concern at paedophile connections here. So good, uh, solid BBC headline, Prince Andrew sex case claim denied, denied. And then at the bottom, of course, we ram it home. Buckingham Palace has denied any suggestions of impropriety. So BBC going great guns here. Let's make sure nobody sticks with what's really going on. And should we be um, prepared to accept a senior member of the royal family mixing with convicted paedophiles? But who's been reporting on him? Well, it's this lady, Regini Vadianathan of the BBC. She's the Washington correspondent. And in this particular BBC article, she says, while accusations are levelled against Prince Andrew, it's important to note that he is not party to the proceedings. So um, downplaying it here, um, you know, it's mm. nothing really to do with him. He's just been mentioned and it's important to note it's not important in her view that the British public should know exactly why a senior member of the royal family should support a paedophile. So what do we know about this lady? Well, here she is uh, from the BBC's own uh, site. Um, what's her background? Well, she came out of Milton Keynes and uh, lots of roundabouts and concrete cows. Uh, she worked as a political producer for Radio 4 and 5 Live on things like the general election. And before that, she was a local telly reporter in Nottingham. But my best job ever has to be, in, to be on an ice cream stall. It got me where I am today. So Seriously? there we have there we have the BBC. This is the quality of the people they are now pushing into the political arena. Is it any surprise that this ice cream sales lady thinks that uh, there's no problem uh, with accusations against Prince Andrew? Or am I missing something? No, you're not missing anything. Well done, the BBC. So, back to okay, you. Okay, here we go. So, on Saturday, uh, Saturday just gone, a story broke about Prince Andrew and his close friend, millionaire tycoon Jeffrey Epstein. 
Now, Bill Maloney has been exposing Prince Andrew's close friendship with Epstein for years now. And the Daily Mail did report this back in April of last year. It also mentioned some of Epstein's other VIP pals who include Donald Trump, Naomi Campbell, former US President Bill Clinton, um, who we will come back to in a little while. So who is Jeffrey Epstein? Well, he was born in 1953 in New York. Uh, he was a partner at Bear Stearns Investment Bank. Uh, he then formed his own company, J. Epstein and Co., uh, which looked after clients with more than a billion uh, net worth. In 2002, he flew Clinton and actors Kevin Spacey and Chris Tucker to Africa in his private 727 jet to promote Clinton's anti-AIDS campaign. His friendship with Andrew uh, goes back many, many years, and the pair have reportedly holidayed together in Thailand and have spent Christmases and many holidays together. He um, set up a foundation, yep, yeah, uh, in to fund science research and education around the world, and um, it was basically fo focusing on um, Catholic causes. And uh, it's worth people going having a little look at that. Uh, in March 2005, a woman contacted Palm Beach Police saying that her daughter had been taken to Epstein's mansion and paid £300 uh, for stripping for him. Police searched Epstein's home, uh, found photos, phone messages of underage girls. Epstein apparently took a lie detector test and passed, um, and passed the test. And then the case went in front of a grand jury who returned with a single charge of felony solicitation of prostitution. In 2008, he began an 18-month jail sentence and uh, uh, served 13 months in jail. And we so can s say to people, if you, we've just chosen a bit from uh, Wikipedia here, but if you want to have a look at the background to that lawsuit, this is here. Yeah, there's, you can go and just put Jeffrey Epstein in, absolutely. Um, and in 2010, a former butler of Epstein was actually sentenced to 18 months in prison for trying to sell Epstein's secrets and his diary books. OK, so that's Epstein. Let's look at some of his highest profile pals. Um, first off, we have Mr. President Clinton. Bill Clinton's name was mentioned 21 times in Epstein's phone book. Lawyers have heard that uh, Billy Boy took a number of uh, trips between 2002 and 2005 to Epstein's Caribbean island, where underage girls were allegedly hidden. Uh, apparently, Clinton cut all ties with Epstein in 2005 when Epstein was first arrested. Um, we're yet to find out if uh, Clinton is going to be called or subpoenaed in court over this. But what I might say to uh, viewers and listeners, it really is worth going and having a look. I think you can find it on YouTube at the Clinton Chronicles. Yeah. And this goes back to the 80s when Clinton was waiting to get in power. And a lot is exposed in that video. And I think, as I say, you can find it on YouTube and it is the Clinton Chronicles. So have a look at that and then tie in the thoughts of what's been reported and his closeness with Epstein and then uh, come to your own conclusions on that. OK, so um, media reports are actually already warning that um, Clinton's connections to Epstein could hamper his um, her presidential hopes. So we have to wait and see if, it, if it's going to call his friendship with Epstein is going to yeah. cause her any problems in so, 2016. So th there's some very interesting things at work here, isn't there? Because apart from anything else, we could say that we're watching the Constitution being collapsed mm -hmm. in this country. We're breaking up Scotland. We're breaking up the Union Sorry, we're breaking up the union, breaking away Scotland. Um, we've got uh, public um, confidence in MPs, yep. expenses, fiddling, scandals, uh, um, paedophile activity. And now, now we've got the royal family brought in this as well. So the, is... the NHS collapsing, confidence in the police collapsing. We are saying this is deliberate. This is being engineered. These people have been on a fishing hook, a baited hook. Uh, for many years. Mm. Uh, now what they're doing is taking the lid off, exposing these people. What is it producing? It's it's collapsing it confidence. Is. I want so. to make a comment after I just put, we're going to talk a little bit about Prince Andrew and his friendship with um, with Epstein. Um, everyone already knows that Andrew and Epstein are friends um, and how he has been implicated in this scandal. Virginia Roberts claims that uh, she had sex with Prince Andrew on three occasions. And according to Miss Roberts, uh, there were many videos which were actually filmed by Epstein. We must also keep in mind that Epstein gave um, 
Ferguson, Sarah Ferguson, £15,000 also to pay off her some of her debts as well. So we need to keep that in mind. So let's talk about some of the girls who've been implicated in this. Um, they're reportedly being very nervous uh, when questioned by police. And questions are being asked on whether witnesses have already been tampered with. And the girls, when girls are being questioned, they are asking to use their Fifth Amendment, which is the right to stay silent. And um, one of the... One of the uh, Girls has came, come out and said Epstein gave generous gifts, cash gifts, and promised, assured them with promises that he would look after them if they remained silent over these claims. And I need to say, so this this makes sense actually, doesn't it? That we got we've we've got something grubby going on, mm. and um, what's every being everybody's being told? Keep your mouth shut. We're paying you. Yeah, you just keep quiet. Just go. But just use of, your rights. One of the papers reported that Epstein was interested in what sexual services girls were providing. He wanted to know the details. And as somebody said to me recently, well, that's classic blackmailers. Uh, mm. Uh, trick, isn't it? You want to know all the dirty little secrets because those could be used later. So, um, w was Prince Andrew reeled in? Well, what I'm th I'm just putting this out there. I'm not saying it's got false truth, and I'm, I'm sure this girl's telling the truth. I'm just putting it, just throwing it in the bin. What if this turns out it's going to be all through the papers, everything, and it's going to turn out for some reason it's 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 all rubbish? Yeah. That then, then we can dismiss. Then the whole we can issue. dismiss any genuine kids who are coming forward with evidence. We saw this with the whole Cliff Richard thing. The BBC was there and it turned out the whole public ended up turning on poor old Cliff Richard because the BBC have, you know, um, taken away his rights to, you know, to privacy and they bombarded his home and this was all a, a setup. So could this be used to collapse the case against the royal family? Because we are having reports that there's paedophiles and kids are being butlers taken, in, and you know, butlers and, and all sorts yeah. being taken in, and, and children being taken into Buckingham Palace. So could this be a way? It's probably not, and it's all probably, it's all probably, you know, I, I going straight on. But playing devil's advocate, what if? I think it's a good, a good thing, and I, th I think really we've got to say to people, we all need to be pretty discerning as to what is actually happening at each stage. Mm. Is the child abuse going on? Without question, it's on a massive scale. It's a sport, particularly of the rich and famous, because they can buy the children. They've got the money. Uh, but, uh, yeah, interesting yeah. thought. Um, can we Show just us... put this slide? And I've got to thank a dear friend of mine, David. Uh, he produces some fantastic pictures. And uh, he popped together this. Uh, I, I don't know when it was, uh, the day or so ago. And this here is showing a lot of people who have come out in the past in support of Epstein. So there you have, we have Bill Clinton up the top. I, then we have um, the chief executive of Bear Stearns, uh, Jimmy, what's his name, Kane? Jimmy Kane. Jimmy yeah. Kane. He, he, and basically, um, the text is a little bit small. We had to use the graphic as it stood, but they're all saying nice things. So... Bill Clinton, Jeffrey is both a highly su uh, successful financier and a commercial a commercial philanthropist. So he's a great guy. He's a really nice guy. And um, Duchess of York, well, she likes him because he lent her a little bit of money. Yeah. Which, you know. Donald every... Trump down the bottom there, bottom right. What's he saying? Uh, that's some, a little bit tricky for me with these spectacles, <laughs> but I won't be caught out tomorrow. Um, so it, it's more of the same thing. He's saying... Yeah. Unfortunately, Louise, I can't read no, that. No, neither can I. My well, there we are. It's so a limitation. Yeah. We're still not up to... Here we have a lot to... of supporters out there for Epstein. Now, uh, Zara Phillips was on a uh, equestrian event, show jumping event in Australia, and got rather embarrassed when reporters started asking questions about Andrew. Apparently, she um, stuttered quite a bit and said, I'm not going to answer that. And uh, quickly, her... Uh, her PR team jumped in and saved the day for less embarrassing questions. Well, I can imagine that uh, it's going to put the cat amongst the uh, the royal. You'd think so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, here are uh, is is basically again the girls who have been told to keep silence, use their Fifth Amendment, and not to speak to the public. And uh, apparently, a couple of these girls have been threatened by Epstein and various lawyers. Right. So we have and to wait and see where this goes now. Right, we'll put this one up as well because oh, yes. it, here she is. This is uh, Fergie saying, well, it, you know, he's a great man. The best, well, in, yeah, best, best in, husband in the world. And uh, so, so yeah. this is the man promoting British industry. Yeah. Um, it's fact that he's mixing with uh, 
with paedophiles. Exactly. He then goes overseas to represent Britain and our industry, and we should all be happy that this is the situation. Yeah, we should all be happy. Well, He's a say, great role model for London, England. Um, and here we have here we have the girl in question. There's the picture of her uh, in 2001 when she was uh, reportedly 16, 17. She is now married. She now has three children. And uh, she, she is now writing a book. She's a pretty she's brave lady, she all is very, very stupid, brave. because she's, she's taking on a monster. I think bravery. I wouldn't call her stupid. If it's all legitimate and all goes through, I think she's very, very brave. So. Right. Well done. Well, why have we stuck with this subject? Because we wanted to really bring home the type of people we're dealing with. And uh, we thought uh, we should revert to um, 2012, February, the 1st of February. In fact, when UK Columns sent an email to Prince Andrew's PA uh, alerting him to the fact that he'd got a visit planned at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College. And at that time, we were already deep into investigation of um, serious sexual and physical abuse of youngsters at the college. So we sent a very polite email to the palace uh, after a conversation on the telephone. Dear Miss Thirsk, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me in person. Please find attached two articles detailing abuse at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College, together with other very concerned members of the public. I'm working to expose and bring to justice those involved in the abuse of young people and covering up such abuse. We've been shocked at what's emerged. All of our work to date is evidence-based and we're working with some of the young victims in person. These are not odd isolated incidents, but a series involving connected abusers over a protracted period of time. The cover-up has been orchestrated in, the view, in view of the background of abuse of students at OCVC, as highlighted in these articles. And since there is now an investigation of sorts underway, I felt that His Royal Highness the Duke of York may wish to be alerted to this fact. So um, here is the man himself, Prince Andrew. He, he was sent mm. the detailed articles. He was given the opportunity to discuss with us our concerns Absolutely. about the abuse of youngsters at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College. Uh, what did he do? Well, absolutely nothing. There was silence. There was no further contact uh, from the um, Duke of York himself or his PA or Buckingham Palace or their media team. There was a wall of silence. And uh, what did the uh, royal member go and do? Well, he went and visited the very workshops at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College uh, where the serious abuse had taken place. And this is a report a couple of days after the visit in 2012, uh, showing uh, the Duke of York circled left next to Sally Dicketts, the principal of Oxford and Cherbal Valley College. And of course, this was the lady in post during which time the college did everything it could to ensure that victims uh, were silenced and uh, members of staff mm. who had been abusing youngsters were protected. So it's no good reporting child abuse to the royal family because um, they don't want to know, basically, and they certainly don't want it to interfere uh, with their, their duties. Their duties. Um, this was uh, an Oxford Mail report from 2010. Uh, college teacher showed porn to pupils. This was talking about Oxford and Cherwell Valley College. Um, the uh, UK column uh, got into the whole affair in great detail because some of these youngsters were so damaged by the horrific um, violence and sadomasochistic pornography they were shown that they are still mentally disturbed by what actually took place at that college. So royal family, um, happy to mix with paedophiles on, an, on, on a world stage. Uh, if we're dealing with UK and we're reporting child abuse, um, they don't care either. Do you think his name's in in this lawsuit? He's mentioned in the lawsuit. Lawyers have got various statements and apparently videos have been made. Will, uh, well, he hasn't been called to stand trial. This is all to do with Epstein. Do you think after all these, if it all gets released in court, in public, will American uh, law officials then call Andrew in and start taking proceedings against him if the evidence it comes out what do you think what can you see happening from this 
One of the things I can see happening is that I, I think that um, on the American side, there are America, many, many Americans who really don't, uh, don't rate Britain's royal family. They're not intimidated by them. So I could see legal teams in America saying we're going to have a go. Uh, but I think at a, at a political level, you are going to see the British government, if it's prepared to cover up torture, if it's prepared to cover up uh, the abuse of children within the system on a massive scale, we are going to see the British government, Labour, Lib Dem, Conservative, working uh, with Obama to squash this because okay. you, you don't want these people appearing. This is the game of the elite. We're now starting to sense what's going on. But we're not, uh, we're not um, going to say that, of course, it's only those at the top of the tree that are causing the problem. We'd also like to point out that at the time we tried to get help to expose um, uh, what was happening with the abuse at Oxford and Chirtle Valley College. We also spoke to, uh, sent a copy of our articles to Councillor Keith Mitchell, who was the then leader of uh, Oxford Council, a Conservative, of course, um, this is an email that he sent back. Uh, if you can make it out on screen there, the subject was your rag. So this man <laughs> was sent a detailed article talking about a very serious subject, child abuse at Oxford and Cherwell Valley College, and he sends back the subject your rag. Uh, this is part of what he said in his email. He didn't believe he does, it says, I do not believe everything I read. Consequently, I sent your publication to the principal of Oxford and Cherwell Valley College, an institution for which I have considerable respect and whose pastoral care is generally of a high quality. I leave her to brief me as she feels appropriate. I know she will take seriously something that may circulate widely and might be believed unquestionably in some quarters. So the material that was sent to this man, he simply passes back to the organisation that was involved in the cover up. And he callously describes the articles as coming out of a rag. Nice, nice N guy. Nice man. Doesn't even want to look into it. Doesn't want to look into it. Never did look into it properly. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Mr. Mitchell, just uh, have a look at his uh, Facebook page. And uh, I think that's Twitter, actually. It's got a little bird. If you see little birds. That's Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I promise to get better on this in due course. So uh, just um, to ensure that the other parties are not left out, uh, we just like to say that, of course, the electioneering has already started. David Cameron was uh, on the case shortly after Christmas. Even some of the mainstream papers picked up the desperation uh, in David Cameron, uh, that uh, he's got to move towards the election. Um, but um, we've also got trouble in the Lib Dems because uh, all of a sudden they've discovered that Nick Clegg has really dissolved their party. Yeah. Uh, he's got himself into power, Deputy Prime Minister un unelected. And uh, what's he been doing? Dismantling the Lib Dem party. And they're now discovering that they actually haven't got enough candidates all the seats but of oh course this is the agenda we think is is going on uh, collapse all of the three parties and aim for a coalition i think we should start calling him desperate dave i think we should desperate dave rather than king david yeah uh, just a little reminder that prime minister of course is whitney uh, constituency uh, that is right next door to Oxford and Cherwell valley college so david cameron certainly didn't get involved or had no. any help um, his deputy Prime Did we Minister get any didn't. comment? Did we get any comment from Number Ten regarding Oxford and Cherwell at all? No, ever? A, a de deathly silence. And uh, the Guardian here telling us a little bit more about what has really started to gather momentum. We've got people being imprisoned on no charges. If you're an asylum seeker, you can be held indefinitely. We're now destroying documents. Uh, we've seen the uh, Labour Party, Conservative Party, destroy documents. Guardian here picking up on documents the government doesn't want you to see, so that 30-year rule being used. They're talking about nuclear tests, GCHQ and the Falkland, uh, Falklands War. Uh, we're saying, well, OK, but what about the fact that we've got the records of children's homes uh, simply being banned for 75 years. Mm. And missing dossiers that suddenly vanish yeah. into thin air. So if you want to look at a dictatorship, and of course at the moment this government's trying to sneer at North Korea, 
Uh, we've got Cameron's own Conservative Party destroying their pre-election mm -hmm. uh, material so that we can't see the scam of their promises. Meanwhile, they, they point a finger at uh, North Korea. Well, a few minutes remaining of our news today. Our message uh, for this opening programme of 2015 is very clear that this country is in deep trouble because we are being governed, ruled by people who include, or a body of people who include criminals and paedophiles, not to mention cheats, liars and expense fiddlers. And until these people are gently removed from Westminster, we are not going to be able to restore proper morality, um, confidence, common law and justice in this country. So a massive task for the public in 2015, understanding how it's being done is a key part of that. Mm. We'll end on a serious note, uh, and that is that um, there was an incident took place uh, around the UK column offices in the last 24 hours and uh, a substantial drone um, made a forced landing um, at a location fairly close to our Scott Road offices. We've got a picture here. Uh, Nick Green was able to take this with a pretty phenomenal uh, telephoto lens. Uh, we understand this is a GCHQ Cobra drone. It landed on a hill. Uh, you can see the drone perched on the hilltop there. Uh, this is adjacent to the UK column offices. Uh, the reason for the unscheduled landing is not fully known, but may have been caused by an onboard fault. Uh, GCHQ and the Ministry of Defence have both declined to comment. Uh, the drone was later taken away by armed police supported by special forces and men in black. Uh, but we're pleased to say that uh, nobody was hurt in the incident. So there we are. It's not all bad news. The drones are clearly not reliable. It may just have been a battery problem, but uh, we'll look into that. And uh, there we are. See you tomorrow. Join us tomorrow. And nine o'clock tonight for the rerun of this show, if anyone has missed the start. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.